This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and it's Smackdown time. Otherwise known as why in the name of goodness gracious would you pay so much more for the Dell XPS 13 versus the Asus Zenbook UX 303 UB. We've reviewed both of these. There are reasons why you might want to pay more for the Dell. We're going to find out what they are now. All right, so here they are, two 13.3 inch Ultrabooks, Intel Skylake 6th generation inside ULV, dual core CPUs, 15 watt, both with metal casings. The Asus, from the outside, I like the way the Asus looks better. They haven't changed the design in a couple of years. That's okay. I think it's pretty. That spun metal, so-called smoky brown finish is really very nice looking and the contrasting colors over here, the taper. It, it's, a, it's a primo looking device. It really is. It is $1299 with a very high-end configuration. And this is the, the same configuration that we reviewed. Intel Core i7-6500U. A RAM is a little bit of a moving target on this 12 gigs of RAM for our model. That's because it actually has a RAM slot. We'll talk about expandability, but in other countries, you might have different configurations. There's four gigs of RAM soldered on the motherboard, one RAM slot. So you can do the math there to figure out the various configurations. This has a 512 gig SSD, nice and ample, a QHD plus 3200 by 1800 display. That's $1299. That's pretty darn nice. And it's a touchscreen too, a glossy touchscreen. Now our Dell XPS 13, you know Dell, they offer their machines in a variety of configurations. But from the outside first, to talk about the aesthetics, that looks, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think this is fine looking. Uh, its appeal is in how small it is. This thing is teeny. Like Dell said, they've got a 12 inch size chassis going here, but it's a 13.3 inch machine. So we put them on top of each other. You can see the difference. I think it's a little, shall we say extremely understated. It's not bad looking. It's metal top and bottom. It's good looking but not as exciting or sleek or ooh-ah and fancy as the Asus. But when you open them up and look inside, that all changes. And then I think the Dell really goes ooh and ah because of that nice carbon fiber interior and the infinity display. That's the near bezel-less display where the Asus looks pretty much like your everyday high quality Ultrabook. So beauty on the inside goes to the XPS 13. This configuration, I, or let's talk about the configurations for the XPS. It's for $9.99, you can get your basic Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, 1920 by 1080 non touch display. Dell runs the gamut. If you wanted to configure something that was similar to the Asus, which has NVIDIA 940M dedicated graphics, by the way, too, for a little extra graphics punch, you'd probably be going for, well, Dell doesn't even list it on their website right now, but the closest that they have is a, around $1,650. That would get you 8 gigs of RAM, still not 12, a 256 gig SSD, and Intel Iris 540 graphics. So that's Intel dedicated graphics, but it's pretty quick. It's better than the 520 in, in the, the lower end models. And the performance is getting close to the 940M. Still not quite there, but it, it's getting closer. So you're going to be spending a lot more money. What are you paying for? You are paying for the design. It does cost money to make something, to smallify it, to make it smaller, to make those motherboards really teeny and fit all those components on, to make something rigid yet very light. This is 2.8 pounds versus 3.2 pounds for the ASUS. So uh, that's a significant enough difference there. Another thing is the cutting edge internals that are on the Dell. Now, Dell, it was a lot of engineering work for them, not just because they had to come, come out with Windows 10 on this, but Intel 6th generation, and they switched to PCIe NVMe SSDs. That's a very fast SSD technology. It's an M2 slot, like we're used to seeing those gumstick-shaped SSD drives, but it's significantly faster. And with our ASUS... Like I said in a review, this is something they could make in their sleep. It hasn't changed that much inside. Yes, it has Intel 6th generation, but they're still using a 2.5-inch drive bay. There's an SSD plugged into that, so that's still an old SATA connector. They are, however, like I said, giving you a RAM socket, so it gives you a little bit more versatility. With the Dell, it is soldered on board. Another thing Dell does is uh, the ports on these, you could say they're somewhat comparable, but Dell gives you a USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port, and what that nets you is uh, this is a full implementation of Thunderbolt 3. So display, charging in, charging out, Ethernet, docks, all that sort of thing. External graphics cards, should they be available? 
gives us a lot of forward-looking versatility. And these are all the latest innovations that are, and they're in this Dell and on this motherboard here, whereas ASUS just goes with the usual normal USB 3 ports, the HDMI, the display port, all that sort of stuff, which is perfectly functional and right now will work with all of your peripherals. Most of us don't have USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 stuff, do we? But if you're forward-looking and you're looking forward to getting docks or maybe an external graphics amplifier, that sort of thing, then the XPS is worth the extra money. So you're paying with the innovation and the forward-looking features there. Here you're getting a real good solid feature set. Nothing terribly innovative, but it certainly will get the job done today. And in terms of those SSD speeds, honestly, <laughs> how much are you going to notice that? If you don't do a lot of large file transfers and stuff like that, probably you're not going to notice so much. Some people are real into having the top fastest specs, though, so there you have it. Now, inside, like I said, you, I think the Dell wins just because of the striking infinity, no, almost no bezel display there. We have the QHD Plus 3200 by 1800 display there, glossy touch. This is also 3200 by 1800 glossy and touch. You can see the difference in the, 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 the native color balance there and a little bit warmer on the ASUS versus on the Dell with the IGZO display. IGZO displays tend to be very cool, which means uh, things look a little bit more towards the blue instead of towards the warm, towards the orange. Of course, calibration can, can twiddle these things in and change them so you can get it where you want. Uh, but that's where you're starting from. This is a Samsung PLS display, but uh -huh, it's not one of those PLS displays that has the oranges look green, or yellows look green rather, obviously, because this is not looking very green here. It's a very good display. It's very bright. This is a very good display. It's very bright. They're both absolutely lovely displays. Honestly, I really couldn't pick one as a favorite over the other. I do find the ASUS a little bit easier to calibrate, to bring it to actually be color accurate. For those of you who are doing professional video or photo editing, that's important. It's hard to get the coolness completely out of an IGZO panel. They both have wide viewing angles, IPS-like. Now, obviously, this is a traditional bezel. It doesn't look so, well, striking when you actually take a look at it, but, you know, that's just looks. Inside, excellent keyboard on the ASUS, excellent keyboard on the Dell. Both are backlit. Really fantastic trackpad on the XPS 13. Pretty good trackpad on the ASUS. Not as good as the Dell's, but it's not horrible. It's not like some of the ASUS's of old or the old UX 501 that we reviewed that had a kind of mind-numbing trackpad. This is fine. It's just not ooh-la-la -la, fantastic like that. In terms of heat and noise, you would think that the Zenbook, because they have a history of being kind of toasty, and especially since you've got that dedicated graphics going on there and that metal bottom, the ASUS actually is the cooler and quieter one. This guy is kind of remarkable. You just don't hear the fan coming on. Unless you're doing something like playing game or exporting HD, full HD video or higher, it's just quiet. And the bottom spot that gets warm is right about over there, but it only gets warm. It doesn't get burning hot. It's quite impressive. The Dell is kind of average in terms of heat and noise. The bottom does get toasty if you're working it hard right here. Pretty toasty. But not like it's going to burn you hot, but hotter. And you'll hear the fan more. Now, this guy isn't noisy. I don't mean the, the XPS is raucous. It's just kind of average in terms of what you're going to hear for noise. And that is, if you're working it moderately hard, you're going to hear the fan come on, come on, go off, come on, go off. Occasionally, within normal range, nothing egregious, just the ASUS is just stunningly amazing. In terms of tactile feel, I'll take this any day. It's nice and matte and comfy and all that sort of thing. It does show fingerprints, but you take a damp cloth with a little soft soap and you can clean it right up. So how about battery life? If you're looking at the, the QHD Plus Dell with the touch screen, you know the battery life is not as good as the 1080p version. It's nice to have that 1080p non-touch version available for those of you who really care about battery life and don't want to touch the screen of your laptop that much. For both of these, you have to undo a bunch of screws on the bottom, and you could get to the battery to service it if you want to. It's just not one of those quick-release pop-out batteries like the good old days. The Dell with the QHD Plus display manages about seven hours or so. In mixed productivity, you're streaming some video, not playing games, not really pushing it monstrously hard, the kind of things that you would probably do in your work day at school or, well, at work. Now, the ASUS has to drive that dedicated graphics, even though it's switchable, NVIDIA Optimus, so it can use the HD 520 graphics when you're not doing something graphically intensive. Still, this one is more like a six to six and a half hour. So the Dell will run a little bit longer. If you get the 1080p Dell, the thing is crazy. That thing can go like 10 hours 
pretty easily with, without being super aggressive with the power management. That obviously is not an option in this model. In the U.S., we're only getting this higher-end model with the QHD Plus touchscreen, the Core i7, all those bells and whistles. And for those of you who really do like the XPS, but you don't want to spend $1,600 or so, if you can live with the Core i5, that's a perfectly capable CPU in there. And I, I would get the 256 gig SSD. You're looking at about $1,299. You're not going to get the dedicated graphics here or the Intel Iris graphics for that price, but you, it is attainable. So there you go. You can see why there are some differences in the price. And a lot of it is with ASUS. Uh, they're going with a kind of an older architecture, tried and true, but it does get you a, a lot of legacy ports. <laughs> We're already calling things like USB 3 legacy. Isn't that something? And with the Dell, you're not getting as many of those legacy ports because you have that Thunderbolt port instead. So you can plug in Dell's optional little dock and stuff like that. You do get your standard USB 3.0 here. I'll, but for those of you who want a display port and you want your HDMI port right now, you're not going to get it here. Lastly, if you're a gamer, you're probably going to want to go with the ZenBook because of the dedicated graphics. Even though you could go for the, the Iris 540 graphics and get almost as much punch, you're still going to get more out of the 940M with the 2 gigs of DDR3 VRAM dedicated graphics memory. And lastly, both of these are traditional laptops. They are not convertibles. They don't bend. They don't flip. They don't spindle. They don't 360. This is as far back as the displays go on each of these. The Dell goes a little bit farther back. Neither of these has active pen support. You could use a capacitive stylus like the kind made for an iPad. Not iPad Pro, but you'd, other iPads. You, you know, the one that's a glorified finger, basically, those fat pokey things no active pen support. So these are traditional laptops for those of you who are looking for traditional 13-inch Ultrabooks. In terms of speakers, neither of them is super stellar. They're, they're decent, they're adequate, they are not too, too thin, they're not super duper full, and they have, well, that's similar volume, actually. So there you have it, ZenBook versus XPS. Uh, a little different from the version that we did for the 15-inch models. That was the UX501 versus the XPS 15. In this case, you know, this guy is kind of a little pocket rocket, even though it doesn't have the fancy internals in some cases of the XPS 13. You get the Core i7, you get the NVIDIA dedicated graphics, you know, low to mid-range though they are. You get a lot for your money in here, and it's it's more boy racer, more tunable, so to speak. You actually have a regular two and a half inch drive bay, very accessible, a RAM slot, that sort of thing. With the XPS 13, you're getting all the cutting edge tech inside, that PCIe SSD technology, Thunderbolt 3. And you get the option of Intel Iris 540 graphics. It might not be quite as fast as the NVIDIA graphics, but it's getting pretty close to the point where you might say, well, okay. And then there's the Infinity Display and the greater portability. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these products. Read our written reviews.